subaerial stems. In subaerial stems, some part lives underground, whereas the remaining part of the stem is aerial, upright weak stem. These stems are weak, which climb up a support to expose their foliage and reproductive organs. Examples, twinners, these are very long, slender and very sensitive and coil round an upright support on coming in contact. Examples, lab lab and dolichus. And then climbers, these have a weak and flexible stem which climb up a support with the help of certain clasping and clinging structures. And the second one is prostate weak stems. These weak stems take support of the ground for spreading as growth occurs. Trailers, they trail along the surface and do not climb up. Runners, these are subaerial weak stems that grow horizontally along the soil surface. Example, cynodon, centella, oxalis, etc. Subaerial stems. In subaerial stems, some part lives underground, whereas the remaining part of the stem is aerial, upright weak stem. These stems are weak, which climb up a support to expose their foliage and reproductive organs. Examples, twinners, these are very long, slender and very sensitive and coil round and upright support on coming in contact. Examples, lab lab and dolichus. And then climbers, these have a weak and flexible stem which climb up a support with the help of certain clasping and clinging structures. And the second one is prostate weak stems. These weak stems take support of the ground for spreading as growth occurs. Trailers, they trail along the surface and do not climb up. Runners, these are subaerial weak stems that grow horizontally along the soil surface. Example, Cynodon, centella, oxalis, etc. Stolons. These subaerial weak stem are horizontal or branched runners with long internodes which can pass over small obstacles. Examples: Fragaria verica. And then offsets. These weak stems are one internode long, stout, slender, and run horizontally and terminate in, the, in a bud at a short distance that develops into adventitious root. Example, Pistia. Underground stems. The stems of some lie below the soil surface. They are non-green, store food as means of perination and vegetative propagation. Rhizome. It is a prostate thick stem growing horizontally beneath the soil surface. It has distinct nodes and internodes. The nodes bear small scale leaves with buds in their axils. Example, gingiber officinalia and banana. These are non-green slender stems that grow horizontally in the soil and ultimately come out to form new aerial shoot. Each sucker contains one or more nodes with scale leaves and axillary bud comb. Comb it is a swollen condensed form of underground stem which grows in the vertical direction in the soil. Tubers. It is a swollen terminal end of underground stem branches. Each tuber has many notches on the surface called eyes or buds. These are actually reduced form of internodes which can grow into new plants. Example, solanum tuberosum. And then bulb. Bulb, it is a highly reduced disc-like stem. It bears a large number of fibrous adventitious roots at the base. Leaf bases form the bulblets. Example, Allium sepa and then Allium sativum. Branches of the stem. The stem may be branched or unbranched. Branching in stem may be dichotomous and lateral. The dichotomous branching occurs by the division of apical growing point or bud into two equal parts 
in a forked manner. It occurs in lower plants, cryptogams, and then higher plants in Canscot pandanus. The lateral branching occurs from the axillary buds of the nodes. Example, pinus, grapevine, etc. And this lateral is divided into two. One is racemose, another is cymose. This cymose is divided into three. Uniparous chyme, biparous chyme, and then multiparous chyme. Functions of stem. Primary functions. Stem perform various primary and secondary functions. Now let us see about primary function. It bears leaves, fruits, flowers, seeds in position. It conducts water and minerals to roots, leaves, flowers, fruits, etc. It holds flower in suitable position so that pollination and fertilization can take place. And in the case of secondary functions, many stems store food as reserve food material. Some stems also help in photosynthesis and vegetative propagation. To the underground stems help in perination. Stem branches provide support to its various parts. Stem transports water and solute between the roots and the leaves. Stems may store materials necessary for life. Example, water, starch, sugar. In some plants, stems have become adapted for a specialized functions. Stems in some plants are photosynthetic and therefore they conduct photosynthesis. Modifications of stem. The stem first one is stem tendrils. These are thin, long and sensitive structure which can coil around a support axillary. This rises from the axillary buds. Example, passiflora. Extra axillary. Develop near the axillary bud. Example, lufa and then cucurbita etc. Apical bud. These are modified to form tendrils. Example, vitis vinifera. Floral bud. These are modified to form tendrils. Example, antigonin. Stem Thrones. The stem thorns are stiff, woody, sharp and pointed. They develop from the axillary bud. They protect the plants from browsing animals. Example, citrus, buranta, pomegranate, etc. Pilocoids. These are green, flattened structures bearing several nodes and internodes. The true leaves are reduced to Pine or scales. They show unlimited growth. Some paloclates also store food and water. Pyloclates are example of some xerophytic plants. Example Opentia. Cladodes. They are green photosynthetic stems, generally one internode long. These develop by modification of only stem branches of limited growth and are green. The true leaves of the plant are reduced tox scales or spines. Example, ruscus and asparagus bulbils. These are modified vegetative or floral buds arising in the axial of scale or foliage leaves. The bulb will helps in vegetative propagation. Example, lilium, agave, oxalis, etc. The leaf. Parts of the leaf. The leaf is a lateral, generally flattened structure born on the stem. It develops at the node and bears a bud in its axial. The axillary bud later develops into a branch. Leaves originate from shoot apical meristems and are arranged in an acropetal order. They are the most important vegetative organ for photosynthesis. A typical leaf consists of 
three main parts leaf base petiole and lamina the leaf leaf is attached to the stem by a leaf base leaves originate from apical meristems and are arranged in an acropetal order leaf base the leaf is attached to the stem by the leaf base in monocots the leaf base is said to be sheathing as it expands and partially and wholly surrounds the stem in dicots the leaf base bears two lateral outgrowth called as stipules petiole it is the stalk of a leaf the leaf blade towards light petiole rises the lamina high to the level of stem so as to provide maximum required exposure to light lamina the lamina or leaf blade is the green expanded part of the leaf with veins and veinlets it has a prominent median vein called as the midrib the lamina is the seat of photosynthesis gaseous exchange transpiration and other metabolic activities surface and extent of incision of lamina varies in different leaves veins provide rigidity to the leaf blade and acts as a channel of transport for water minerals and food materials the shape margin apex surface and extension of incision of lamina varies in different leaves venation the arrangement of veins and the veinlets in the lamina of leaf is called as venation when the veinlets form a network and the veneation is termed as reticulate veneation when the veins run parallel to each other within a lamellae the veneation is termed as parallel leaves of dicotyledon plants generally possess reticulate veneation while parallel veneation is the characteristic of most monocotyledons simple and compound simple leaves a leaf having a single or undivided lamina is called as simple leaf an axillary bud is always present in the axil of the leaf petiole and stem the lamina can have various types of incisions which may reach up to half more than half or near the base or midrib in compound leaf the incision of the blade goes down to the midrib the leaf is broken up into a number of segments called as leaflet a bud is present in the axial of petiole in both simple and compound leaves compound leaves is divided into two pinnately compound leaves and pinnately compound leaves in this leaves the incision of lamina is directed towards the midrib which is known as rachis leaflets are arranged on both sides on the rachis example in palmately compound leaves the leaflets are arranged at or attached at a common point that is at the tip of petiole as in silk cotton phylo taxi the pattern of arrangement of leaves on the stem or branch is called as phylo taxi it helps to avoid overcrowding and provides where every leaf with optimum sunshine the three types of phylo taxi are alternate opposite and hold alternate phylotaxy means a single leaf arises at each node in alternate manner example china rose mustard and sunflower plants opposite phylotaxy means a pair of leaves arises at each node and opposite to each other example calotropis and 
Sidem Guajava Hold Pilotaxi If more than two leaves arise at a node and opposite to each other are called as Hold Pilotaxi Example Alstenosia Modifications of leaves Leaves of plants are modified to perform different functions in addition to their main function that is photosynthesis leaf tendrils these are thread like sensitive structures which can coil around a support to help the plant in climbing example wild pea pylode it is a green short lived and a flattened petiole or rachis of the leaf which performs the function of photosynthesis example australian acacia bladder the segments of the leaf modify into bladder like structures which trap small insects present in the water example bladder oat and then pitcher it is a petiole modified into a tendril to hold the pitcher upright the leaf base is expanded to carry out photosynthesis example nepenthes leaf spines the entire leaf or a part of a leaf may be modified into a pointed structure called a spine as in opentia kale leaves these are thin membranous leaves found at the nodal region each scale leaf contains an axillary bud in its axil example gingiber officinariae functions of leaves the structure of leaf is optimized for absorbing light and carrying out photosynthesis and photosynthesis is a process that plants used to produce their food transpiration is also a function of leaf transpiration is loss of water and exchange of carbon dioxide in return the inflorescence a flower is modified shoot wherein the shoot apical meristems changes to floral meristems when a shoot tip transforms into a flower it is always solitary the arrangement of flower on the floral axis is termed as inflorescence depending on whether the apex get developed into a flower or continues to grow two major types of inflorescence are defined racemose and cymose in racemose type of inflorescence the main axis continues to grow and the flow flower are born laterally in acropetal succession in cymose type of inflorescence the main axis terminates in a flower hence it is limited in growth the flowers are born in a basipetal order there is also a special inflorescence it mainly involves highly modified and densely crowded inflorescences the special type of inflorescence can be divided into three types cyanthium verticillaster and then hypanthodium in cyanthium it is a highly reduced and a cup shaped of five bracts having nectiferous glands a single large female flower is present in the center of the cup and scorpioid male flower surrounds this female flower every male flower is represented by a single stalked stamen born in the axil of scaly bracts example euphorbia verticillaster these are two clusters each having 3 to 9 flowers that develop on a node in the axils of opposite leaves example osimum scantum hypanthodium in this type the main axis is condensed into a cup or flask shaped fleshy receptacle 
it bears three kinds of flowers that is male flower female flower and the neutral flowers occurs in between male and female flowers example peepal and banyan tree